Well, let me thank all of you for your, for your testimonies, and we appreciate very much you being here again. I will now start our questioning, and I'd like to start. Uh, Mr. Zimmer, uh, I've heard that the, basically the, the components, I mean, the type of steel that we use for pipelines for gas is different than what we would need for hydrogen. Uh, so is there any way to recoat that? Is there any type of technology that we have, or does it have to be repurposed? Can we sleeve it? Or does it just have to have a whole new composition of pipe? Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Chairman Manchin. I, I, we truly believe that we can repurpose significant portions of our existing infrastructure to move hydrogen. I think that at, at blend, blended levels, relatively uh, low levels, even up to 20%, we believe most of our existing infrastructure can accommodate hydrogen. And if you think about our Transco pipeline system, it's the nation's largest natural gas pipeline system, moves over 20 BCF a day of natural gas. 10% of Transco is 2 BCF a day of hydrogen. That's more hydrogen than is produced around the world today. So we have an opportunity to scale up a hydrogen economy with the technology that exists today yeah. in our infrastructure. And as we do that, we will continue to expand our ability to increase the amount of hydrogen and ultimately, we believe, get to 100% hydrogen pipelines. So you believe this technology is there now to repurpose the lines you already have? At, at blends, we do believe that. At blends, you and, can. And yeah. to get to 100% hydrogen, I think of it like the interstate highway system where today we can't put electric vehicles across the country because we need to add sure. you know, charging stations. I believe that we can uh, modify the existing infrastructure without having to replace uh, significant portions. Mr. Marsh, uh, you seem to be the leading uh, uh, proponent of, uh, in real terms, in the commercial market today. And you found those markets for uh, hydrogen. Uh, I'm, I'm really a, a big fan of hydrogen because I believe it's a good, it, it's, it's the right direction for us to go. My, my biggest concern that I have right now is that we have not invested the money that we needed to invest in hydrogen. I mean, you look at basically how quickly we matured in one decade, wind and solar, Bottom line is we put about $100 billion to do it with, with tax credits and about $10 billion as far as investment for new technology. We haven't done anything in tax credits for hydrogen. And so as we've been talking and going back and forth on everything, uh, tell me what would be the best thing that we can do as Congress to put hydrogen on the map to make sure it's going to be the leader, the transitory, does the heavy lifting, things of this sort. Senator Manchin, uh not only do I think it can be put on the map for the United States, I think it can be put on the map to allow us to be exporting hydrogen. A production tax credit of $3 per kilogram for green hydrogen with a sliding scale for blue hydrogen will make us the leader around the world in renewable hydrogen production in a way that I would really like because I spent a lot of time in Europe where it's a top down by using the tax code to encourage people. In what form would you transport it overseas or whatever? How would you do it? Green ammonia? I would transport green ammonia. God, that's Absolutely, from an energy density point of view, it is the right way to go. Let me ask you another thing in making, yeah. in making hydrogen. Okay, we know that once we have the hydrogen, we, it's used as, as carbonless, right? It's carbon free. Yes, it is. But making it can be carbon productive. Mm -hmm. And we have to be able to. I've asked people, I said, uh, well, if you have gas as a transition fuel from coal, mm -hmm. and if gas is a transition fuel, then why would you go ahead and do the extra step of making hydrogen uh, and use as much exposure as far as for, for carbon by making the hydrogen? And then I was told, and, and I think maybe you and I talked about this, if you centralize that, if you centralize making your hydrogen where your gas production would be, so it won't be, it, it's not being made as green hydrogen with, with renewables. We're not in an area of the country that has enough renewables to do that. But then if you have sequestering it, you'd have all of it made at one place, and then the hydrogen would go in to the utilities to make the a energy that we need. Is that what you're? Absolutely, Senator. You know, we're a pure play green hydrogen player. That doesn't mean I don't believe there's other solutions. And blue hydrogen with carbon capture and sequestration can still makes be green. a great makes a great deal of sense for me, to me. Uh, you know, geological storage, you know, we have to be serious about that. Yeah. Let me uh, just If add. I can just, if I, if I may, and because we'll have more questions, I want to go to Dr. Krutka real quick. Sure. You come from Wyoming, which is, like West Virginia, a very uh, intensive energy state. Tell me how you all look at this as a transition fuel or a fuel for the future. 
So thank you, Chairman Manchin. So we work on all of the above, um, and we really consider this as part of a portfolio and an opportunity to address heating and other other opportunities for energy where uh -huh. you know you can't apply carbon capture and storage and other things like that. Thank you, Senator Brasso. Thanks so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Kirk, to follow up, one thing, so, I'm so glad you're here today. You have a doctorate in chemical engineering. Uh, it's my understanding that most 